push the button to see how bygones begun. It's gone dark. You are now looking at Bygones Victoria Street in miniature. Most people who come into Bygones want to know how did we do it and why. It all began with a steam engine. One day, my husband went out and came home with a 28 ton railway tank engine. He had seen it advertised in his railway magazine and purchased it from Falmouth Docks, where it had been replaced by the inevitable diesel engine. We already had a house full of railway honour. The walls were covered in engine name plates. There were lamps hanging from ceilings and large copper chimneys were filled with house plants. When he announced a steam engine was on its way, that was the last straw. I insisted it wasn't suitable for our small garden, and the house already looked like a railway museum. Yes, a railway museum was what my husband had always dreamed of creating. So now was the time to take the plunge. This was a big gamble, as at the time, we ran an extremely busy sub-post office with a regular monthly salary and two other news agents. We didn't delay. We sold the post office within months and bought an old cinema only three doors away. We now had an empty shell a large engine, plenty of railway armor, and nothing else. We realized this was not enough to hold the general public's interest. After all, everyone is not a train fanatic. We both love antiques and going to auctions in particular. So why not build an old fashioned street with old shops and rooms and fill them with all the items from a bygone age. So this is how it all began. The next problem was who would build it as it was impossible to contract such a project to a building firm. Over the years an excellent mason had made many alterations to our shops and our next door neighbor's brother was a very skilled carpenter. With a little persuasion, we fired their imaginations and they set about the daunting task of recreating a Victorian street life size. Now our dreams were materializing and for nine months, we all worked together day and night to plan, build, and search out old windows, bricks, slates, wood, and old shop contents. We traveled all over the country, going to demolition sites, architectural antique dealers, and auctions. Gradually, the street became a reality, and the night before Bibles was opened, all our friends came to work into the early hours of 23rd May 1987 when, with much trepidation, our doors were opened to the public by the Mayor of Torbay. And the rest is history. <laughs>